Have you ever seen something in your vision just to have it disappear in a few seconds, leaving you confused or maybe even a little bit worried? Well, there are loads of visual phenomena and I'm going to expose some of those today. In today's video, I'll help you distinguish which of these phenomena may be normal versus which may indicate that something is wrong. Floaters, flashes, dark spots, rainbows, hallucinations? Let's talk about some visual disturbances and phenomena that may have left you in the dark. If you've never experienced this one before, this could be a fun experiment to try at home. Turn on the fan and look right at it to notice how quickly it's moving. Then look slightly to the side of it and notice that in your peripheral vision, it looks like it's moving much slower. This is called the stroboscopic effect because it gives the same stop motion effect that you get when using a strobe light. There are a few reasons behind this, mainly the way the retina is designed. Photoreceptors and retinal ganglion cells are spaced further apart in the periphery than in the macula, which is responsible for central vision. Because the cells are further apart, there's lower spatial resolution. Think of an old TV versus a new one with high definition. This is why the periphery cannot see fine detail. Just try reading a book with your peripheral vision and you'll see what I mean. Because fans move so quickly, the blades look continuous, but because of the lack of fine detail perception in the periphery, the periphery cannot accurately perceive fast motion. So it appears to be in slow motion. The less dense presence of photoreceptors and retinal ganglion cells in the periphery also causes temporal resolution to be slowed down. Temporal meaning time. It can't process rapid motion as well as central vision, so it appears to be slowed down. Flash blindness is the reason behind that pesky little rectangle that you see after someone takes your picture with a flash camera. You tend to see this bright box as an after image because the retinal cells in that little zone have been bleached by the bright light. The reason behind this is actually occurring on a molecular level. These retinal cells are overwhelmed by the bright light and they need to reset in order to see properly again. And you might've noticed that it takes a while to adapt when you walk into a dark room. Dark adaptation actually takes about 30 minutes or so because at the molecular level, these retinal cells are having to do that work. But as soon as you walk into the light, they're bleached again. And if you go back in the dark, the process is gonna to have to start all over again. Have you ever seen your white blood cells? And no, I'm not talking about through a microscope. If you've ever looked up at a plain blue sky, chances are you might have seen their movement. The blue field and optic phenomenon or Shears phenomenon is exactly that. The retina of course has a blood supply and some of these blood vessels are on top of the retina between the world and the retina. That means that light has to pass through those blood vessels. And it's thought that white blood cells in the blood vessels scatter the light, causing the appearance of bright dots or streaks that move around. If you've seen these, you may have noticed that they appear to dart around in a linear fashion. And that's because they're passing through the pathway of the blood vessels. You might have seen Moore's lightning streaks, which are lightning-like streaks of light in the peripheral retina, usually seen in the dark and due to eye movement or changes in head position. And this is because retinal nerve cells are stimulated by the movement of the vitreous gel in the eye, and that causes those retinal cells to send signals of light, so you perceive light that's not actually there. Though sometimes Morse lightning streaks might indicate changes in the eye, like age-related changes, they usually don't have to be looked at urgently but we do need to make sure that it's not a retinal detachment. Retinal detachments are similar in that they're also usually peripheral bursts of light, usually more easily seen in the dark as well. Uh, but in the case of a retinal detachment, there's actually a tear in the retina. There's actually something going on. But what's different is that they're usually associated with new floaters in the vision. And if you aren't sure what those are, I'm gonna be talking about those in a little bit. I know a retinal tear might sound painful, but there's actually no pain along with it. Just like in Morse lightning streaks, these retinal cells send signals of light to the brain. Same as a retinal detachment, they send signals of light. Different nerve cells are responsible for different functions. Some feel pain, well, they don't necessarily feel pain themselves, but that's the signal that they send. And some are responsible 
for perceiving light. So when these retinal cells are touched or stimulated in some way, light is perceived rather than pain or touch being felt. It's important to be able to tell the difference between Moore's lightning streaks and a retinal tear or detachment. But distinguishing between the two can be difficult without a dilated eye exam to check on the health of the retina. It's always a good idea to be checked, especially if you are at higher risk for a retinal detachment, like if you have high myopia, diabetic retinopathy, or you've had a history of retinal tears or detachments before, then you definitely should get it checked out. That being said, Moore's lightning streaks usually are more variable in how they look. They occur less consistently. They usually are only noticed in a dark room and they're not typically accompanied by other symptoms like floaters or vision changes. Have you ever had your eyes closed in the dark and notice a light when you press on the eye? These are called phosphenes, and the reason behind them is similar to what causes the different kinds of flashes that we were just talking about. It's the retinal nerve cells being stimulated and sending that signal of light to the brain. Only in this case, the stimulus is from the outside with your hand pushing on your eye versus from the inside with the vitreous gel bumping up against the retina. I remember as a kid rubbing my eyes at night and seeing what looked like a beautiful starry night, but Please don't do that. You may have noticed that if you press on one side of the eye, it looks like the light is coming from the opposite side. And that's because of how the retina sends and receives information. The side of your retina that is closest to your ear, the temporal side, is actually responsible for seeing the part of the world that is closer to your nose, the nasal side. The retina actually receives information about the world upside down and backwards. And then once it gets to the brain, that information is flipped right side up again. So when you touch the temporal side of the retina, your brain actually thinks the light is coming from the nasal side because that is the area of vision it is wired to perceive. You won't have had this visual experience unless you've had some form of significant vision loss. Advanced cases of macular degeneration, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy or others resulting in significant vision loss can lead to Charles Bonnet syndrome. In this syndrome, someone may see visual hallucinations that could take many forms, whether it's patterns, figures, animals, objects, or even people. I've heard someone describe a pattern of turquoise diamonds and others describe seeing a little boy and girl. It's really important to remember that this is not a psychological condition and the people who experience these hallucinations are aware that they're not real. It is happening in their head, but not the same way the saying goes. It's happening in their head, specifically in the visual cortex, which is hyperactive. Think about it like this. The visual cortex is used to being very active, constantly relaying visual information every waking moment, but suddenly the eye is no longer sending visual information to the brain, but the brain is still fully capable and is used to being active. So it kind of makes stuff up and that can take different forms depending on the person. The brain is trying to compensate for the lack of visual input. If you've experienced Charles Bonnet syndrome, some of the things that can help the hallucinations go away a little faster are to move your eyes up and down really fast, turn the lights on and off, blink quickly, stare at the hallucinations, or look away from the hallucinations. Floaters are a nuisance that most people have probably experienced, especially if you've been around for a few decades. The collagen in the gel that fills the eye clumps together and this casts shadows on the retina. They're usually more noticeable against a bright or plain backdrop like the sky, a computer screen, or a plain white wall. They're usually not too bad, but some of them can be pretty big, especially if you've had a posterior vitreous detachment, which we'll talk about in just a moment. They're usually no big deal. I've had mine for many years without them changing as far as I can tell but sometimes they can indicate a problem like a retinal tear or detachment. A new big floater may be a posterior vitreous detachment. And this is something that happens normally as kind of a process of aging, usually above age 55. The percent chance of it happening is fairly equal to your age. It happens because the gel that fills the eye changes in structure over time, tends to get a little bit more liquidy than jelly, and that causes it to detach from the parts of the retina that it's tightly attached to. And that can leave sometimes a circular or a large clumped floater because of where it detached 
from the optic nerve, which is circular in shape. Since this is a fairly normal part of the aging process, it's typically no big deal, but sometimes when that vitreous detaches, it can tug on the retina, causing a tear or detachment or lead to bleeding in the eye. So it's important when you experience a large new floater that you get the eyes checked right away, especially because of those retinal tears and detachments. Now, retinal tears don't always need to be treated depending on the type, but a lot of them are, and that's because they can lead to retinal detachments. And retinal detachments, if they're not treated urgently, can lead to permanent and irreversible vision loss. Ocular migraine auras can be beautiful, psychedelic, otherworldly, but also downright scary, inconvenient, and maybe even dangerous. Perceived as zigzags, rainbows, blurry spots, or tunnels in vision, ocular migraines happen because of abnormal activity in the visual cortex, the part of the brain that's responsible for vision. Imagine driving when suddenly your vision goes blurry or it looks like you're looking through a kaleidoscope. When migraines strike, it can be scary. And sometimes the best thing to do is to just wait them out. Sometimes medication might be prescribed, but it often takes so long to kick in that the migraine is already over because they tend to last an average of about 20 minutes or so. Some of the best things you can do are to drink some water, avoid caffeine, and rest if you can, because dehydration, too much caffeine, and stress can all be triggers of migraines. Once they're over, vision tends to return to normal, though sometimes you can be in a fog for a day or so. Ocular migraine auras can occur with or without a headache and they can be pretty alarming if you've never experienced them before and leaving you wondering what to do. It's best to see an eye doctor to rule out any retinal problems since the symptoms can be similar, just like those retinal detachments we were talking about. And seeing a neurologist may be recommended, especially if you don't have any history of migraines before and this is just starting to happen out of the blue. Did I miss any visual phenomena that you've experienced that you'd like to learn more about? Comment below. For more cool facts about the eyes, check these out. And I think you'll like this one too. Thanks for watching.